Hi right guys, welcome to this video on the structure of blood vessels. Uh, we're going to take some time just to have a little look at the different kinds of vessels that we've got that carry blood throughout the body. And also we're going to contextualise it initially by just talking a little bit about blood flow. So in this diagram, we're just going to talk about how blood flows through the system. Um, we've got the heart in the middle there and we've got the lungs. You'll notice that I've put the heart and the lungs a bit closer together because they are in fact closer together. The blood has to travel much less, uh, less distance to get from the heart to the lungs and back again than it does to go from the heart to the rest of the body, which is represented in this, uh, in this diagram by the muscle icon on the right hand side. So as blood flows around the body, um, we're going to start off by tracking it from the heart. So initially, deoxygenated blood in the heart travels to the lungs, which are nice and close by. Um, that deoxygenated blood, shown by the blue arrow uh, to represent the fact that it's low in oxygen, travels from the heart, the right side of the heart, to the lungs. And when it arrives at the lungs, it picks up oxygen. And so from the lungs, it then returns back to the heart, but now it's full of oxygen, so we're going to represent it with a red arrow to show that it's oxygenated blood. Now, the blue and the red aren't um, the actual colours of the blood, of course. The blood is always red. Um, the reason we use blue and red is just for diagrams. So don't be confused and think that when blood is deoxygenated, it is actually blue. It isn't. It's, it's just a duller kind of red. But that just doesn't show up very well on diagrams. So we use the blue for deoxygenated. We use the red for oxygenated. So this oxygenated blood has now returned from its little short journey to the lungs. It's returned to the heart and it's now in the left hand side of the heart, ready to be uh, ejected from the heart to the working muscles. So out it goes to the working muscles. It's again, it's still oxygenated. That's why it's come um, to the heart from the lungs to be sent to the working muscles for cellular res respiration, bringing the oxygen along. Arrives at the muscles. The muscles extract the oxygen that they need. Uh, for cellular respiration to keep contracting and so on and then the blood continues on its journey back to the heart so you can see there's almost like a double circuit going on here heart lungs heart then heart muscles heart and the cycle continues almost as a figure eight kind of cycle any arteries that are or any any blood vessels let me be more specific any blood vessels that are moving away from the heart are referred to as arteries. So it may or may not be the case that the arteries are car carrying oxygenated or deoxygenated blood. Usually, since the vast majority of arteries are going from the heart to the body, the vast majority of arteries do in fact carry oxygenated blood. But that's not actually the definition of an artery. An artery is simply a vessel that is moving away from the heart. And you can see that clearly on the diagram. The arrows that I've labelled as arteries are clearly going away from the heart. And I remember it by the fact that arteries begin with the letter A, as does the word away. That may help, I don't know. Secondly, any vessels, whether or not they have got oxygenated or deoxygenated blood, any vessels that are going towards or into the heart, we refer to those as veins. And the way I remember this is that a vein contains the word in, V-E-I-N-S, vein is into the heart. And again, oxygenated or deoxygenated is not the reason, is not the way that we categorise these. If the veins are heading, if the vessel is heading into the heart, it's a vein. Okay, so we've got arteries going away from the heart. Um, wherever they're going, if they're going away, it's an artery. And wherever they're going, if they're going into the heart or towards the heart, it's a vein. The other vessels we're going to talk about in the next few slides are uh, help us to understand what happens when uh, the arteries bring the blood to their sort of target location. So in this case, when the arteries arrive at the lungs, how exactly is that blood, uh, how does it come into contact with the, either the lungs or the muscle? How is it transferred through the lungs or through the muscle? And then how does it come out the other side into veins? Uh, and that's done by a specialised set um, of vessels that we refer to as capillaries. So blood flow happens in this order. Heart, arteries, lungs. Then the capillaries transfer the blood from the arteries to the veins. 
which then flow back to the heart and then from the heart to the muscle the blood travels through arteries then it kind of dissipates through the capillaries before re-emerging or kind of on the other side of the system or the other side of the muscles into the veins which then return that blood to the heart and the whole cycle just continues round and round so let's look at the arteries let's look at the capillaries and let's look at the veins and figure out how they're specialized to do their particular jobs because each of those is somewhat different so beginning with arteries then you'll note initially that i've referred to arteries in the in the heading arteries and arterioles um, and i don't want to get, get you caught up on the terminology except to simply explain that arterioles are small arteries so as the arteries as you can imagine um, split and branch off as they get smaller they become what are known as arterioles but in terms of structure and everything else we're going to talk about they are essentially the same thing as arteries they're still carrying blood away from the heart they're still for the most part carrying um, oxygenated blood and for the most part they're structured in the same way so let's look at um, arteries and arterioles together so as we've already said arteries begin with the letter a which reminds me that the arteries go away from the heart and remember that that means that they don't always carry oxygenated blood but that they usually do the exception is the pulmonary artery and again you remember from other videos that the pulmonary artery the word pulmonary relates to the lungs so the artery that is going away from the heart but going to the lungs is the only artery that doesn't carry oxygenated blood that doesn't carry oxygenated blood it's carrying deoxygenated blood but it's going away from the heart so it's still classed as an artery the key features of arteries are that the, the walls tend to be thick uh, and very muscular so there's a large content of muscle in the wall of the artery and the various reasons for that um, and the main reason for that is because they have to cope with the highest level of pressure in the whole of the system so as the heart contracts to eject blood out of the heart that pressure that's created um, as the blood is ejected through the arteries that pressure is at the highest as it leaves the heart into the arteries as it's going away okay so particularly um, the aorta which is the largest and thickest and most muscular of the arteries that's that first artery that leaves the heart so as soon as the blood leaves the heart it goes straight into the aorta um, that first main artery that's off on its way to the body and to the muscles is the most elastic and the thickest of the arteries because it's got to cope with the massive pressure that's created when the heart contracts to send blood all around the body so arteries and also arterioles are structured very similar they're thick they've got these muscular walls so that they can cope with the high pressure that's created uh, by the heart contracting and sending blood flying through these arteries and as the blood moves through the system the pressure slowly drops and that becomes significant in just a moment so the arteries are going away from the heart and bringing blood through vessels to either the lungs or the muscles and obviously the various other organs but we're not going to focus on those in this video so what happens when they get there as blood arrives at the lungs and at the heart it arrives from arterioles so you remember that i said arterioles are just small arteries the arteries have split and branched and split and branched and so on and now have arrived at their destination they've arrived at the organ where the oxygen is supposed to be being either dropped off or picked up so dropped off in the case of muscles picked up in the case of the lungs so they've arrived from these arterioles into this dense network um, located in the tissues um, where the oxygen is either being picked up or dropped off so let's be specific about this we're talking about the lungs on the one side of the diagram that we've just looked at and we're talking about the muscles and obviously the other organs on the other side of the diagram and these this dense capillary network sometimes called a capillary bed is embedded in the tissue so that might be embedded in the muscle tissue itself through between around so that 
there's maximum opportunity for the oxygen that's being carried in the blood to be diffused or dispersed into the tissue. And in the case of the lungs, the maximum opportunity for the oxygen to be picked up and the carbon dioxide to be dropped off by dispersing it through and in and around the lungs, the alveoli that you can learn about in another video. Um, so the purpose of the capillaries is to enable gaseous exchange. This is the, the place where the gases, that oxygen um, and that carbon dioxide that we focus on um, in terms of respiration, those gases can be swapped. So at the muscle, oxygen in, carbon dioxide out, and then at the lungs, um, oxygen um, into the bloodstream, uh, out of the alveoli, and the carbon dioxide into the alveoli and out of the bloodstream. So gaseous exchange takes place at the capillaries. It doesn't take place through the arteries. It doesn't take place through the veins. It happens at the capillaries. And that's why we have this capillary network all in and around the tissue so this gaseous exchange can take place. Well, how does it take place? It takes place because these capillaries have very thin walls. In fact, for the most part, these capillaries are a single cell thick. And so that really enables that gaseous exchange to take place rapidly. So the rapid uptake or, or drop off of oxygen and carbon dioxide, depending on where we're talking about, uh, is enabled through these really thin capillary walls. And the other thing to note is that because um, these capillaries arrive in, um, have been supplied with um, with blood from arteries, they retain relatively high pressure. So the pressure is retained relatively high at this point. And once the capillaries then re-emerge from the tissue and start to join back together again, then the pressure starts to drop. And as they join back together again, they become no longer capillaries, but they become uh, the next type of vessel. Uh, that we're going to talk about in just a second. So arteries come from the heart, they're moving away from the heart, those arteries split into arterioles, they split further when they arrive at their tissue that they're, they're um, either dropping off or picking up the oxygen from and the carbon dioxide, then they split into these capillaries which are these tiny really thin walled uh, vessels still maintaining high pressure, that enables gaseous exchange and then they start to rejoin, join back together until finally we reach the last type of vessel. And that last type of vessel is veins. So again, you'll notice the heading here includes the idea of venules. So we've got veins and venules and venules are very similar to arterioles or the relationship between veins and venules is basically the same as arteries and arterioles. A venule is just a little vein. So as, um, as blood flows through the capillary network, and let's say it's gone through the muscle, it's dropped off the oxygen that's required for muscular um, respiration, for muscular contraction and so on to produce the energy required. It's flowed through that capillary network. Those capillaries have started again to join back together to, to slightly larger capillaries. And then eventually they come out of the muscle tissue and start to join back together. Initially, as they join back together, they're still really small and thin. They're venules. And as the venules join back together and become thicker and, and wider and, and larger, those then are what we call veins. But both venules and veins are coming from the capillary bed back towards the heart. And so therefore, that is why we refer to them as veins. So you remember I said previously, a vein is any vessel that's going towards the heart because it's got that word in. So the venules are just little veins. They join back together to make veins and then veins finally eventually return blood uh, to the heart. And the last vein uh, is the vena cava, which you can um, find out about a little bit more in another video, in a previous video. The vena cava is the final vein that rejoins the heart and brings the blood back into the heart, ready to complete and continue the cycle. So the veins and venules are bringing blood back to the heart. Note just one more time that although for the most part, because they're heading back to the part, 
back to the heart. For the most part, the blood that's contained in the veins is deoxygenated blood. But again, remember the pulmonary vein, because the pulmonary vein is that vein that goes into the heart from the lungs. The pulmonary vein, in fact, carries oxygenated blood because it's just picked it up from the lungs. So the classification is it's more important as to whether or not it's going into or away from the heart. That determines whether we're talking about arteries or veins, not so much whether it's oxygenated or not. That's an important thing to remember. So how are veins different to arteries? They're still blood vessels, of course. They're, st they're still sort of roughly um, tube shaped. Um, but there are some key differences, one of which is that veins and venules have really thin walls really thin walls. There's, there's not as much muscle tissue in a vein as there is in an artery. And part of the reason for that is because um, they don't need to produce the same volume of pressure because the pressure that, or they don't need to cope with the same volume of pressure. The, the greatest pressure comes in the arteries as the blood leaves the heart. By the time we get through the capillaries, the pressure has dropped and dropped and dropped. Um, there's no need for the veins to maintain the same level of pressure um, because the speed of blood returning to the heart is not as vital as the speed of blood. I mean, it's still important, but it's not as vital as the speed of blood from the heart. So thin walls are not a problem. We're just sending that blood back to the heart. So thin walls mean lower pressure, but lower pressure, what we don't want to happen um, in the case of lower pressure is we don't want blood just pooling in the veins that is just gathering up because there's much less pressure gathering up say in the feet if you're standing up uh, or sitting down you don't want blood pooling in your feet there needs to be some way of getting that blood back up against the force of gravity back up to the heart so in spite of this lower pressure there needs to be some system whereby blood can be sent back to the heart without it just pooling and the way that the veins do this in, in, um, in a different way to the arteries is the veins have valves within them. And you can see that on the diagram there, a valve. So every few um, centimetres in large veins or less than that in smaller veins, every now and again during the course of the, f the blood flow, the blood will meet a valve. And the valve will stop the blood continuing on its way until the sufficient blood arrived in the vein to have enough pressure to open the valve. So once the, the blood has kind of built up sufficiently in the vein um, behind a valve, it will push that valve door open and the, and the blood will flow through into the next little section of the vein. And so the amount of blood that's returning to the heart in a sedentary individual, or if you're not doing any exercise or you're just kind of asleep or whatever, there isn't a massive amount of blood returning to the heart. So this process happens really slowly. So the blood pulls a little bit. Eventually there's enough for the blood to push open the valves and it pushes open the valves and heads through. But during exercise, that obviously massively increases. So the blood then will return to the heart. It's what we call venous return which sounds like it should be an 80s rock band, but it isn't. Venus return that sends the blood back to the heart and it does it by having these valves. So the blood sort of pulls behind the valves until there's enough blood there to push the valve door open and then pass on into the next section of the tube, the valve, uh, the vein, sorry, heading back to the heart. And that's the way that the veins do it as opposed to the arteries. The arteries do it by force of um, pressure and that's why they have these uh, muscular walls, the veins do it differently. Thin walls, because of lower pressure, they use valves to keep the blood moving. Well, I hope that's been a helpful explanation of the different kinds of blood vessels and how they relate and how they all link together uh, to allow blood to continue to flow through the system. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.